Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And tonight we have a lovely guest, a, a woman who is just moving up in the voiceover ranks, Noveen Crumby. Hi, Noveen. Hi, guys. We got lots of questions for her. And if you've got a question for Noveen, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is in there and we're going to ask her all those questions and we're going to have the funnest hour you could possibly have. Are you ready, Mr. Whittem? I am set. Let's do this. <laughs> It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. All righty. Another week, another VO BS. Fresh content for you folks every week. That's why we're here to make sure that you get the best information to help you with your voiceover business. And yes, it is a business kids. Uh, it's a, an entrepreneurial business. You're the one responsible for finding work. You're the ones that have to get out there and make it happen. And we want to show you how to get it done. And one of the ways we do that is by talking to some of the people that have done all the hard work that have paid their dues, made it happen. And, uh, so we have somebody like that tonight. Let's introduce our guest. Noveen Crumby is a multifaceted actor who is currently best known for bringing a range of characters to life through the power of her voice. She's widely recognized as the voice of E Network, that's E with an exclamation point, and has announced the People's Choice Awards, the Screen Actors Guild Awards, stuff like that. And the characters she creates can be heard across action video games like Redfall, and the BAFTA award-winning game Red Dead Redemption 2. What about one? An animated children's series including Rainbow High and LOL Surprise, House of Surprises. Her voiceover work also extends into documentaries, books, and commercials, and she's appeared in TV, film, and theater productions. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Noveen Crumby. Hi there. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a thrill to have you on. You're a... Uh, you're a very busy lady uh, these days. You're doing an awful lot of we, stuff. And we kept you busy to open up the show, too. You had, <laughs> running, had you running and getting your mic and exactly. adjusting settings and on and on. But thanks for being here. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, as I said, you're very busy. You know, George says, mm. oh, you got to get Noveen Crumby on. She's like really hot right now <laughs> and she's doing everything. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What was your path to voiceover? So originally when I was younger, you know how your parents kind of try you in different things or like, oh, let's try them in this sport or modeling or whatever they want to do. And I ended up doing community theater and absolutely loving it. Went to school for musical theater for four years, never thought about voiceover, didn't really know what voiceover was. But throughout that time, people were like, oh, you have a great voice. You should really try voiceover and and um, 
check that out. So after I graduated, I got into voiceover classes, took that for a year, found out it was a talent that I didn't know I had, and got an agent the year after and just been working in the industry since. And it's been about seven years now, which is crazy. So now I love voiceover. I love uh, voicing uh, shows and animation and award shows. It's It's been a surreal ride. It's been awesome. Yeah. So you got an agent after a year. Yeah, yeah. I took classes with Jeff Howell. Shout out Jeff Howell. Amazing. And yep. he's the one who really noticed my talent and decided to share it with his friend who's the voice of Atlas Talent Agency. And um, they loved me, and I've been with them ever since. It's great. Yeah, no, Jeff's a, a great coach and, and certainly a prominent person out there in the, in the promo world. And uh, mm. so if he noticed you were good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there are coaches that are good to work with because of who they know and, mm -hmm. and what they do. Not only are they great coaches, but they connect you with great people. Jeff's yeah. definitely one of them. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Now, I read you worked at Disney as a dancer. Is that yes. true? Yes, it what is. What was true. that like? Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I love Disney, Disney everything. So, my whole dream was to just work at Disney before acting, before voiceover, all that kind of stuff. And I auditioned for Disneyland a couple times, finally got in. And I had been a dancer in the parades for about two and a half years. So the summer parades, um, the Christmas parades, Fantasmic, that's um, out now. Um, but unfortunately, COVID happened and Disney kind of shut down for a year. And then my life got busy with voiceover, so I'm not mad about it. But... Disneyland oh. was so fun, so surreal, and I really want to go back. I just, I want to retire there. Honestly. <laughs> really? I would love to just go back there. What now, distance man? did you cover when you were marching and dancing? What was the distance that you had to go? From the front of the park, the entrance, to literally the very back where it's a small world is. Yeah. Like mm. the whole park. So working there, it's it's a workout, honestly. You yeah. don't need to go work out on your own. They will work you out for you, and... I was in shape then, and then COVID happened. But yeah, yeah I definitely want to go back. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I hear that if you're if you work at Disney, you're not an employee. You're a cast, cast member. member. Yes. Did you ever run into Kiff? Kiff <laughs> Who's Kiff? Kiff? Kiff was always Kiff playing a cop in the uh, I think the New Orleans area. Oh. He was a cop there all the time. I didn't Kiff know and that. Kiff Van and I wasn't huh. sure. It's it, it's not a, that small of a world. Yeah, right. But <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it is a small world <laughs> after There's all. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. So uh, obviously, I mean, quarantine affected you, but how did mm -hmm. how, I take it that, you, as you said, your voiceover work really picked up during, during, uh, during COVID. How did that go? Yeah, it actually went the complete opposite for me. And I know how people, you know, kind of lost their jobs and how to kind of find a different direction in life. Voiceover somehow was fantastic for me. I kept getting more bookings, more auditions, more jobs, and was very grateful and thankful for all of that because that's definitely not how I expected it to be. Um, I was the, um, the voice of E, so I was still doing E every single day. That didn't stop because I recorded all of that at home. And all of the bookings that I had, normally you would go out and record it in a studio, but that's when everyone wanted people to have their own studio professional set up. So, of course, contacted George, and I got a home professional studio set up, and that was right before COVID had happened. So. I was good to go throughout all of COVID, so I got really lucky there. Yeah, you did. If you know, if you were ready before it happened, yes. we'd Luck only been favors. warning people for ten years. You, know, <laughs> maybe, yeah. you probably should have one. Luck favors um, are prepared. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and you were doing stuff all across the spectrum. I mean, documentaries and narration and yeah. And um, I got contacted by Netflix, and I did some um audio descriptions for them. So oh, cool. for people who might not know, audio description is basically you're describing what's happening in the scene for the um, hearing impaired and um, did that for a few of their documentaries. Um, one of them is called Crack and talks about the crack in the U.S. and all of that. And um, Death to 2021, Death to 2020. Um, I have Rum Springer that actually came out as well on Netflix. So I did a lot of audio descriptions there. Um, got some video games, which have finally come out now. Some are still under NDA. So, um, those it's take been years, right? Yeah. It's what? Yo, those yeah, take years, years sometimes. Years, years they do. Um, booked my first McDonald's radio ad too. And I've been wanting to get McDonald's 
And ever since then, wow. they kind of just keep using me for stuff. And I'm like, this is great. I love this. I'm what is it about lucky. McDonald's? It's such an iconic <laughs> commercial, right? It's, it's just it seems like the get in terms of commercials. Yes. It's, it's just such an icon to, to get a commercial for McDonald's. I don't know yes. why. It's, it's like the name brand. You want that like on your website. You want that on your resume. And I was like, all right, bucket list checked off. Got that. <laughs> Remember we had Roger Leo party on. He was telling us all about how to do the McDonald's read, you know? Right, right. It's just such a thing. It's such yeah. a thing. It's cool. I got to do the ba da ba 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 And I was like, all right. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Dennis like Cox doing it. It's like. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. it's like yeah, yeah he does good. that kind of uh yeah he sounds like a jazz man yeah. Like yeah yeah i do hear that I was like, I doesn't that. sound scottish at all <laughs> yeah. now you've been doing you know the, the award shows and we know a bunch of other voice talents that have done award shows mm -hmm. i mean we, we know you know randy thomas yeah, and, randy. And, a, and a bunch of people Wilson like Disney. that yeah how did you pursue and land those jobs I actually got, my first one was the MTV Video Music Awards, the VMAs in 2017. And I got that from doing an audition with my agency. And the thing is, when I've done auditions, I never really get hung up on them. I kind of just do them and send it off and kind of forget about them. Yep. And then I ended up, I remember I was at the beach by myself, just enjoying the day. And I got the call uh, from my agency saying, you booked the MTV VMAs, you are going to be the live announcer for it. And that just like was so amazing and when i actually did the show i was like okay so this is another side of voiceover i'm learning i really really like this a lot and because i did that i got the people's choice um awards after that and since that was with e at the time and i signed with e um contractually i ended up doing the people's choice awards every year after that um and then from then i was able to get the sag awards in february um mtv movie and tv awards recently and I feel like my love in voiceover is award shows. I really love live <laughs> announcing. I love the thrill. I love the challenge. Some of my friends are like, that's too nerve wracking for me. I could never do it. I would, I'd rather do other video games and stuff. And I'm like, I love the thrill. I love yeah. live stuff. Yeah, no, li live is a lot more fun because, you know, it's like, what's going to happen? And yeah. then you just, you just do it. You get into it. You know, I mean, mm. I've, I've done sports broadcasting and stuff like that. Mm. And you're, you know, it's really tight. You know, that's like, okay, this is coming up and yep. you've got, you've got so many notes. What did it involve doing these types of award shows? What sort of things did you have to learn? Uh, definitely people's names. Because, <laughs> and how to pronounce them. Of yeah. Some of them are difficult <laughs> because of course they're not always American. So it's not easy for me to pronounce. So I had to go on YouTube and do a lot of research. They also gave me phonetics of how to pronounce it. But the most important thing is you want to find them saying their own name because that's how it's correct. Don't see someone else saying their name. So that was a lot of digging. So definitely had to look into that. Um, I also learned eating specific things and not eating specific things on the day of show. <laughs> so I stay away from like milk. I stay away from mac and cheese or ranch dressing with salad. It's just like straight dry food and lots of water. Um, but yeah, just trying to stay healthy and knowing what I'm saying, practicing it, getting the timing right. And um, just letting it flow right off my tongue. Right. Now, you, and of course, you're working with a director and somebody who is probably directing specifically what you're doing and yes. then the show's director. Who, who were you working yes. with? So for different shows, it was different people. Uh, lately, it's been um, Amanda, who's worked with me on the uh, MTV Movie and TV Awards, and we've worked on People's Choice as well. And so she's in the room with me. And so she's listening to the director and the producer and everyone queuing everything and counting down. And I'm listening to that too, but it's also like I have another set of ears listening in case I happen to miss a cue or something happens and we have to change the script or something, which has happened last minute. Um, but we have another set of ears with me. And um, yeah, it's just a double check and to make sure everything's perfect the way it's supposed to be for the show. How do you train for that though? I mean, yeah, you the first show you do is, I mean... How do you how do you practice? How do you prepare to do something of that nature? There's is, is there classes for that? I never took classes for that, which is the crazy thing. When I trained with Jeff Howell, it was just classes for a year. We did promo, we did some animation and stuff, but I never really learned live announcing. So I feel like that's something that naturally comes to me. And it's something that I enjoy doing. So from the first show that I did, the MTV VMAs, I kind of just picked it up and I would watch award shows. So I would listen and hear how they do it. 
and I kind of just picked it up and just really loved it. Yeah, that's it's fascinating. You know, I, a lot of people, if you came out of radio, you understand, you know, doing mm-hmm. the stuff live because it's like, oh, Mike's on, you're, you're talking. Yeah. Um, but interesting now that most of the people doing those types of things are women now. And it used to be, it was always guys. And then Randy Thomas was like one of the first people to yeah. do the Academy Awards. Yeah. But now it seems to be all women. You guys are taking over. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's amazing. And I've, I've met Randy and I've looked up to her and I'm just like, man, I want to do what she does. I want to announce these award shows. She's killing it. She's doing everything. And I was like, all right, this is what I want to do. Award yeah. shows is my favorite. Yeah, you know, and I'm and I'm sure it pays pretty good too, because you yeah. gotta you gotta be skilled at it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're just joining us, where have you been? Uh, but we're talking with uh, Novine Crumby, who is uh, a voice actor, yes. and she does everything. We're just talking about uh, doing live award shows and uh, and a little bit more about what what she does. If you have a question for Novine, throw it in our chat room. Whether you're on Facebook Live or you're on YouTube, or you're watching through smoke signals, just throw it in there. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Holman is in there taking notes for us, and we will get those questions to her in our next segment. So if you got something about, you know, something she says, like, I want to know a little bit more about that, mm. throw it in the chat room, and we'll talk about that. Well, I had a quickie go about the live. Go mouse. for it. Do, do you have a, um, an understudy that also is there just in case something happens to you? Is that I've how they do that? never <laughs> had one unless they just never told me. <laughs> um, but what they do actually is we pre-record everything. So the show is uh, half pre-recorded and half live technically, but uh, we still record the live portion just in case something happens to me, uh, COVID okay. or I get sick or whatever happens last minute. But they do pre-record the live stuff uh, just to be safe. But wow. I'm still saying all of that live regardless. Very good. Um, now let's talk a little bit about gaming voices. Cause this is mm-hmm. something a lot of people want to do games, Yeah, not easy work. Um, no. and nice work if you can get it, but then once you get it, there's a lot to it, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, hang yeah. on, hang on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've no red, red falls, very popular. Red dead redemption was mm-hmm. very, very popular. Not that I play these. I'm just too old for this stuff. Let the <laughs> kids do that, but I'm, you know, I'm familiar with all these things. How do you land gigs like that? I mean, are your agents out there looking like, you know, specifically in different categories of stuff? And they're like, oh, Novine would be really mm. good for, for this. And how did you land those particular gigs? Because those are really good ones. Thank you. Yeah. So in the beginning, from what I've seen, it's just they would send me auditions that they think that I would be right for and that I fit and that would be good for. Um, over the years now, I can kind of tell that they are picking specific auditions that they think I would definitely be good for. Um, when it comes to those video games auditions, it's definitely the part that you fit. What voice ranges can I do? What ages can I do? Um, the ethnicity that I can do as well. So it definitely comes down to that. Also, what I've noticed is the funny thing is when I took classes and we, um, I learned stuff in those classes, I never learned how to scream or choke on blood like friday the 13th <laughs> which i have right here never learned how to choke on blood never ha- learned how to like get my throat slit and just die so that's something i definitely Ugh. learned while i was recording i was like cool jeff never learned that but thank you <laughs> <laughs> so, and, how, yeah. and how do you do that well what's your what's your method for that I mean, my method, I kind of get, you know, a little saliva in my throat, kind of choke on it a little and scream and (laughs) holler and safely, though, because that is definitely vocally stressful on your throat. So that I had to kind of take easy and they would take the sessions easy. But um, yeah, I've just been very lucky to get these types of video games. Like I said, like you said, Redfall, Friday the 13th. I have Creed um, over here. Uh, Yeah, Ozaria, The Sinking City, a lot of video games. So. I've been really lucky to get these things. Yeah. I don't know. These like multiple day jobs or do you go in and just, you know, kick it all out in an afternoon or. They're multiple days, especially the vocally stressful ones. Redfall was multiple days. Friday the 13th was multiple days. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. That was one day. Um, Yeah. That one wasn't super vocally stressful, but the ones where I am screaming and running for my dear life, that one has to be spread out over a few days. Yeah. Are these all done at home though? 
Um, now they are. Redfall has always been in studio because we also did facial motion capture for that. So that was yeah. in studio. We did that a few times. Red Dead was in studio. Um, Friday the 13th was in studio as well. Yeah, the Sinking City was in studio. Now I'm thinking a lot of these are in studio, so I go out for them. The ones at home is like McDonald's or a little promo or stuff like that. Or animation I do at home as well. Um, but yeah, video games now I'm thinking about it is all go in studio. Yeah, because you've got to work with the director there, and yes, and they're yeah. real picky about audio. Yeah, oh, they real yeah, picky. and it's like yeah, and it's I have to be physical too. So I kind of like that video games like that are in studio where I have the space to kind of expand. Yeah, instead of just sitting in the booth. So that would be yeah, a little really. different. Right. Yeah. Uh, once again, we're talking with Novine Crumby about uh, gaming and you know gaming voices and doing live uh, award shows and all the other stuff she does. We'll talk a little bit about that. But again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, how, you know, you talked a little bit about you know choking on blood and getting your throat <laughs> slit and stuff like that. How do you pre- how do you prepare for the characters in this, and what type of outlines do they give you? So the outlines that they give me is, of course, what the character looks like, who they are, their age range, their background, um, the scene that they're in. So, for example, Vanessa Thir- uh, Vanessa Jones in Friday the 13th, um, uh, one of the camp counselors, and she's basically terrified for her life the entire video game. So she's <laughs> trying to get out of Crystal Lake, and so finding all these things, and it's just like a lot of heavy breathing, and it's, if you've ever played the game, it's dark, and it's sometimes rainy, and it's just spooky. So, of course, you're trying to be quiet. And there's a lot of heavy breathing. It's just I kind of put myself in that space, how they would feel. And I would be terrified for my life. So I would be quiet, too. But also, like, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, just freaking, <laughs> internally freaking out, pretty much. Yeah, and, and then getting <laughs> slashed. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> just, like, screaming, just, like, running away. Then, yeah. And then she's sassy towards Jason, too. So it's, like. Yeah, she's going through a lot. <laughs> now you were saying you had to do mocap for this. What yeah. what does that involve? I mean, some people have seen pictures of it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Did, was that a whole new experience for you? And what did you have to do for that? That definitely was. I hadn't done mocap before that. I believe I did it for I did it for Red Dead Redemption too as well. Um, I don't think I did it for Friday, but I definitely did it for Redfall, and that was definitely interesting. Uh basically they get little dots and just put it all over your face and then you have this giant like crane thing and a camera which is really up in your face like that so no personal space whatsoever it's a bright light and the guy who's putting it on has a little mini ipad so what he sees is literally this so it's just like (laughs) there's it's all like high definition as well so it's like you can't do anything about it you can't wear makeup it's just like you see pimples and everything so great Mm -hmm. but it was definitely all up in your face and kind of interesting but after a while you kind of just i kind of forget that it's there because i'm so into the character and doing what i need to do besides when i accidentally hit the camera like on the mic i'm like oh right sorry (laughs) let's redo that take (laughs) so the mocap was always constrained to being in front of a mic or you had were you more physical were you moving around the room ever or was it always always constrained to being like in front of one fixed kind position of in between that so i wasn't super constrained but i wasn't also moving around the room it was kind of just in that space where i was i could move my hands and my arms and stuff but not move my head too much where it's off mic and you can't really hear me while i still have the camera in front of me um, but I was still able to move around and do what I need to do to kind of get in character. If, for example, like for Friday the 13th, if I'm running or even Redfall when I'm running, it's kind of like running in place and kind of just looking around with your eyes, but not moving yeah. too much. So I was still able to get in character and do what I needed to do. Yeah. Wow. wow. It's fun stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, Sounds fun. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's acting now. And of course you've also done on screen work. Yes, I've done some on screen. um, I've done some commercials when I was growing up as well, and some here. Um, When I was younger, I did the Science Center of Connecticut, because I'm originally from Connecticut. So I did a lot of commercials there, and I did a Ford commercial when I was here. And then, if some of you may or may not have known, I was also on the Ellen DeGeneres show where 
She gave me some gifts and she gave me a car. So that was like an incredible amount of screen time I've ever had, wow. which has been crazy. So I was in two <laughs> episodes of the Ellen DeGeneres show and then on her Game of Games show as well. So uh. I call her Auntie Ellen. <laughs> Oh, no so you way. like fell through the thing there and uh... Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> that was uh, crazy. Once again, we're talking with Novine Crumby. You got a question. Now's a great time to ask it because we're gonna get to those <laughs> in just a minute. George, you had something you wanted to ask her about well, LinkedIn? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously Novine, we worked together, so I knew of you. Mm -hmm. But the reason I really you got my attention was your posts on LinkedIn. And you are working LinkedIn in a way that most of the, and I, I'm connected with thousands and thousands of people on there. You are working LinkedIn on a level that I haven't, not really am seeing happening. Hmm. And I'm wondering, and first of all, good for you. Thank you. It just shows what dynamic work you're doing and it's exciting to watch. I love the thing you just posted. I guess it was today um, where you were lip syncing yes. your own read to yes. the spot. Yep which was really yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so it's all really impressive, but is that worth it? Are, is that, are you getting the ROI from all that that you put into LinkedIn? Is it getting you clients? I wouldn't say right now it's getting me clients. I'm definitely getting a lot of messages and interaction on the posts and comments. Um, not clients necessarily. I did yeah. get, um, I forget what company it is, but it's another top voiceover agency that messaged me, I don't think I should say who, but yeah. um, messaged me and was like, hey, um, who are you repped by? Mm -hmm. Well, if you ever wanna come over to us, we'd love to have you. And mm -hmm. I'm like, thank you, I love At <laughs> Atlas, but thank you for now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I notice I'm, at least people are getting out there and seeing me, which is kind of good and seeing what yeah. I'm doing and I'm inspiring other people, which is great. And definitely trying to go on their profiles and inspire them and see their work and kind of encourage them as well. But um, I kind of just know like anything that you have, you want to put it out there. You want to share it with people and um, you never know who could see it. So, yeah, that's yeah. true. You know, it's like in radio, we say, you never know who's listening. Yeah. So mm -hmm. be careful what you say. Cause I've, <laughs> exactly. I've known some people that said stuff that perhaps they shouldn't have said and then found themselves out of a job. Oh, no. Yeah. That, well, yeah. We like to talk about how, how voiceover is an entrepreneurial business. Now, you, oh, you know, clearly you have you have uh, agents and you have people yes. looking for work for you. Do you do your own forward marketing? George was just talking about using LinkedIn. Uh, how else do you do you get yourself out there? So besides LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I do other social media websites. So I do post the work that I do. Everything you see on LinkedIn is definitely posted on Twitter. It's definitely posted on Facebook and Instagram as well. So I do share it on all platforms out there. Um, I recently signed with a publicist, so that has been great and they have been helping me to get more out there and um, to kind of get my name known in magazines and get on red carpets and getting more interviews. So they've definitely helped when it comes to the next step of advancing your career. Um, but when do, you, when do you know it's time to do that step? When do you know, how did you know it's time? Were you getting recommended recommended by those around you? It's time to do this. It was actually by a friend who recommended uh, me to that publishing agency. And then my boyfriend, he's actually in the music industry. And he was like, I see all the work you're doing. You're killing it. You need to get out there. You should be on the red carpet. You should be in this magazine. You should be interviewed everywhere. So he actually was like, this is the next step we need to do. And mm. he's the one who's really guided me and helped me into that. Because I never knew that was the next step. I didn't know that was a thing. I knew people had publicists. But I thought it was like, oh, you need to get bigger in order to get that. I didn't really know how to do that. So I really give him all the credit when it comes to mm. guiding me and, you know, encouraging me and supporting me and getting me or more out there. So um, I all, it's all thanks to him. So I'm still learning when it comes to this business. So, yeah. yeah. The businesses yeah, but, are different, yeah, but the yeah. skill sets are similar. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, you have, you have the resume. You have everything. Now we just need to get you out there. I was like, all right, let's let's do this. I'm I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. Have you done any modeling too? <laughs> I did modeling when I was younger. I did. Yeah, I did runway modeling when I was younger, and I haven't done it since then. Um, I did John Casablanca School of Modeling, and I got some uh, print ads, um, but I haven't done modeling since then. 
The only modeling really is me wearing all my Disney stuff down Main Street <laughs> in Disneyland. It's the only modeling I do. <laughs> That's about it. All righty. Once again, we're talking with Noveen Crumby, and we're learning a lot about all the different stuff she does. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. We're going to get to it in just a couple of minutes, but right now we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Noveen Crumby here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. It's travel time, and whether you're relaxing on a beach, sweltering in a car, or waiting for your Group 9 to board that already delayed airplane, nothing calms one down like a good read. Why not read the best real-life story entirely about voiceover from Harlan Hogan, celebrating his 46 years as a card-carrying sag after member, reflecting the quantum change that has occurred in the way voiceovers are recorded and cast in recent years. This updated second edition describes the advantages and disadvantages of auditioning and recording from home studios for clients around the world. There's useful advice after every chapter dealing with Harlan's journey from terminally shy kid to voiceover legend. New and expanded session stories from the trenches. How to make professional recordings at home and on the road. How to create demos and auditions that win jobs. How to market yourself. All about agents, unions, and fees. Voiceover, tales and techniques of a voice actor. Autographed, and it makes a great present at nineteen ninety five. Only at voiceoveressentials.com. Now I want you to imagine somebody puts out a call for an audiobook narrator... And you burst through those doors. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. How would you like to add audiobook narration and production to your VO toolkit and earn union wages even if you're a non union narrator, even if you're a VO talent that hasn't joined the union yet? So if you want to work with ACX and Audible and all of the other big publishers and big producers, I'd love to hold your hand along the way and do it at a really great cost. The ACX Masterclass Home Study Edition is open for registration as we speak. Go to acxmasterclass.com slash join. That's acxmasterclass.com slash join. We start this Monday, so don't wait. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back with Noveen Crumby, having a wonderful talk with her, learning about all the cool stuff that she does, which is sounds like just about everything. <laughs> but we got a lot of questions here from our, our vast worldwide audience that is fascinated by what you're all about. And why don't we start with some of those? All right, George, all right. you're up. From the top, J. Horace Black in our YouTube chat. Uh, he says, hi, Noveen, congrats on all the success. First question, what kind of setup? Or Mike, I knew he would. He always asks about the gear. <laughs> I never have to do it because Jay does. Thanks, Jay. What kind of setup or Mike uh, did Jane, did George set up for you? Well, there was one that I set up for you. Mm -hmm. And then I think you may have evolved since then. But tell us what, what's been your tech journey a little bit. Well, hi, Jay. Thank you for the question. Um, so, of course, George has helped me. Um, 
So I do have, for my interface, it's a ZI-10. For my microphone, it is a Sennheiser, 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 MKH-416. So the shotgun mic. And this one actually was specifically requested when I um, became the voice of the E-Network. So this is the one that they wanted. So this is the only one that I've always ever had. It took all the, it took all the guesswork out of it. Yeah, it was just like yeah. this. Yeah, they were like, the we want this one. I was like, okay, cool, sounds good. Uh, so I got that one. Uh, currently, I am in a closet that I've turned into a voiceover booth. So George has uh, helped me to get, they're like little pads, square pads that you can buy on Amazon. And I just have those all around me in um, my little studio. So that kind of helps the sound to kind of stay in, but not to... to Fuzzy, boxy sounding boxy or super sounding. dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, that's basically what I have. Um, and then I use Audacity as um, what I record on. You're keeping it simple. good for everything. Yeah. Yeah. All the clients have been completely fine with that. They've never really asked about yeah. that. So Audacity good. gets better and better. The only time yeah. I have trouble with Audacity is if there's any trouble with it. Like if there's anything buggy, which doesn't happen that often. But, you know, you can't really email the developer because it's all volunteers. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, yeah. but it Open generally, stores, it's, yeah, generally it's very, it's very reliable. Um, and so you're in, you're in the closet still. You were in a closet before. You're in a new closet now. With, yeah, it's a little bit more spacious. Exactly, you have a little bit more room to move. The other one was pretty small. Yeah, this one's a, a it's a lot better. And the other one I kind of shared with my actual clothes in the closet, so it was kind of like right. a half studio, half closet. But this one is just a closet all on its own. It it feels a lot more like a studio. Excellent. Great, and yeah. then uh, his second part was about your SAG award work. Um, Jay says, "Do you uh, did you do live announce from home or on set for that?" Uh, thank you again, Jay. So for all award shows, they're all done on set, I guess you could say. So uh, the MTV VMAs was at the Forum. The SAG Awards was at the Barker Hangar. I'm always there on set, and they have a booth basically like a room that they've turned into a booth uh for me to do all the live announcing so like i had mentioned earlier the well, half of it is pre-recorded so like the packages like um best hip-hop video da -da -da, <laughs> justin bieber and mo like that kind of stuff is all pre-recorded but the coming up next and after the break and please welcome that's all live and that's all there so i'm seeing all the celebrities come in i'm seeing the craziness happening setting up the show i'm there for all the rehearsals so yeah we're definitely there for that so yeah. not at home do, yeah do you get to dress really nice for that i do yeah i get to walk the red carpet i got to walk the red carpet for the mtv movie and tv awards which i did uh last month so i got to walk the red carpet do some interviews i had pictures taking of me i was like Wow, okay, thanks guys. And then I showed up in US Magazine, E News, uh, US Weekly, like all of that. And I was like, all right, cool. This is cool. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So that was really awesome. So, yeah. And post that everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is literally <laughs> everywhere. I was like, guys, look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Marco Pelez asks, well, you sort of asked this already since you're working from home. Could you quickly tell us about your home studio setup? Well, mm -hmm. George and you just talked about that. Uh, so glad you're a guest. Your energy is intoxicating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Marco, for the question. Yes. Uh, interface is ZI-10. Microphone is Sennheiser MKH-416. Um, we just call it a 416. Yeah. Like okay. Perfect. Like, no no one know. even knows what an MKH <laughs> really stands for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've you just know what learned what they George? are. <laughs> I don't actually know what MKH stands for, no. But it, anybody in this business, 416, or if 416. you're, as we joke around on my other show, we say, we call it the 416, just because we want to be weird. Because <laughs> like half, like half the co hosts are from Australia. So we like <laughs> I'm to gonna do that. that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the, it's the 416. It's, a, it's, an, it's, it's, it's the 416. For people that don't know that. what the ZI 10 is, that's a, an audio face slash mixer that mm -hmm. has USB that plugs into the computer. So it's got a little bit more capability, the loopback functionality, mm -hmm. and it's made by Allen and Heath for those who are going, what the heck is ZI-10? It's ZI-10. Of course, mm -hmm. it's a cute play on words of Jedi. That's why they call it yep. ZI-10. So that's the Z. In, yeah. in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned something too. So. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Uh, you get the one from Luke Spry. Luke Spry mm -hmm. says, hi, Naveen. Uh, 
What advice do you have for the upcoming voiceover artist looking for their big break? And how do you manage your work-life balance? We always want to know that question. So yeah, let's start yeah. with it. What, uh, do you have a little nugget of advice for the someone who wants to be the next you? I mean, I'm only going to be me. You are just going to be the best version of yourself. So the way it works for me, it's, it sounds like I should give you like this magical answer, but honestly, it really is just classes. Take classes and there you learn the foundations of voiceover. You learn the terminology. You learn the different aspects of voiceover, how video games is different from award show, which is different from promos and different from documentaries. It's all different. So voiceover classes really, really do help. And like we were talking about before, um, be on social media, be in those those rooms and those classes and talk to people who are in those classes like um, Clubhouse. There's a lot of classes on Clubhouse where people are just doing podcasts and interviews. You can always learn from people. So kind of just absorbing yourself with everything that has to do with voiceover. Um, and you kind of just learn along the way as well, too. I didn't really have any way that I kind of like snuck in there um but it's kind of like the saying where preparation meets opportunity and it kind of just works out like that but yeah. you have to you have to want it and you have to be dedicated to it it can't just be kind of like oh i guess i'll kind of try it you have to really want it and it'll it'll show up for you yeah, yeah. as i like to say you, it's got to be in your gallbladder yeah to want to <laughs> do it <laughs> Yeah. Have, you, have you had the chance to work with any of your any of your idols or favorites, you know, favorite people that you've listened to over the years and you've actually been in the studio with them? And um, Not really. Actually, I've kind of met friends through um, doing all these different projects where I kind of been fans of them as well. Uh, one of my good friends, Zeno Robinson, he's actually one of the voices on Friday the 13th as well. We've done other projects together too, which has been crazy because we didn't know that until we got into studio and he is just booking his last booking was Dragon Ball Z. So he's booking things here and there. And that's like a dream of his. Um, my friend Gabe Kunda, we haven't been able to work together yet, but I definitely want to give him a shout out. He is just killing the game. He's one of those deep voice, deep voiceover trailer guys that you hear. He does all the Disney plus stuff. He's killing it as well. But um, I'm still waiting for the day that I can actually work with See, the thing is with voiceover, it's like <laughs> you kind of do work with some other voiceover people. You kind of don't. Randy Thomas would be so cool to work with if we announced something together. But usually it's like one or the other. Or if it's both, you're like not in the studio together if it's an award show. But um, animation, Tara Strong, if I said that right. Tara, Tara, Tara Strong. Tara, yeah. I would love to work with her. That would be amazing. Um, I'm still learning all the big people in the voiceover industry, but... I would love to just be graced by their presence in this. I'll put room. in a good word for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank of course, you. I, I have the 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 Terra Strong Memorial Chair. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you have your you have original booth chair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, wow. it's sitting and sitting in my booth, it's like ooh, <laughs> it's magic. It's been blessed. Oh, it, man. it has. <laughs> Once again, yeah. we're talking with Novi and Crumby. And if you, again, if you've got a question for her, you can still got some time to throw it in the chat room. We'll get it to her. Yeah. Uh, play the voice, Real Kids VO Family. Uh, oh, I know who that is. And now I understand the question. She asks, if you had a magic wand to improve the voiceover industry, what would you change? Oh, boy. <laughs> hmm. I Be careful what you wand. say and don't mention any names, but oh, go yes. for it. <laughs> to improve the voiceover industry. One thing or, okay, I kind of have two. Pick an industry because we know that the voiceover industry <laughs> is I, I know. really things. many different um, industries. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so something that I would change. Oh, gosh, there's, I have like three things. Okay, okay. one thing go I would definitely, one. yes, the, the number one I would say is, trying to find out how to word this without really okay i'll go with this instead okay one thing that i would change is be easy on the last minute turnaround voice or auditions like the asap ones sometimes i'll be out running errands or i'll be out at the beach and we're like hey we need this in two hours go quick now and i'm like 
rushing home or if I can't make it home in time, I have to do it in the car. But it's like, if you ever do voiceover auditions in the car, you hear, you know, that you hear every single sound on the road, in the garage, everything. But you don't that, do it while you're moving. No, no, really yes. no, 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 no. <laughs> you're definitely parked somewhere or you just go in a garage, find the quietest spot. But the ASAP turnaround, one hour, two hour turnaround auditions are just... Oh my gosh, your day just goes from relaxed into like stressful. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get this in. And especially if it's a project that you've been wanting to do, like McDonald's, or if it's like Barbie or some audition that you've always wanted to do. And it's like a turnaround audition. They're like, hey, they didn't find what they wanted. Then they really want to just like have you audition real quick. Let's do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, okay, I can be home in like two hours. Like, um, just, just tell them to hold on. I'm, I'm going to get this. And it's just like, <sighs> that's really stressful. So I wish they were more kind of cognizant of the timing when they kind of just throw that stuff out there and kind of give us a, a break a little bit. But I, I we, we do like, the best we can, honestly. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, like, it's like, I don't know if they forgot that. Life happens like, like, too? Yeah, well, they know <laughs> life happens, but I think five, ten years ago, it wasn't all that, it, the sound quality audition didn't matter that much. Like it really uh, didn't matter that much. Not for those big commercials. They know you're doing it in a studio. Yeah. Right. But that's changed a lot since the pandemic. And a lot mm -hmm. of this stuff is being recorded in your home studio. Yeah. So you you're not handcuffed to the home studio. You can't you have life how you do actually have a life. And like you you're when those commercial auditions come up, like the expectation is that they're gonna sound like pretty close to the real thing. And so, yeah, you can't necessarily do that in a car. You, even if yeah. you have an Apogee mic in the glove box or another 416 in the back with a, and then you pull over the side of the road and then, you, yeah, you it can, you can everything. pull off like a promo real fast. That's mm -hmm. going to be on the air mm -hmm. and gone in 10 seconds yeah. and no one's going to hear it again with mixed with music. You can't do that with commercials. So yeah, I, I, I hear you, uh. You know, I, <laughs> the the agent uh, in question. Um, I know a lot of your fellow compadres uh, that are blessed as being a Atlas talent, and I I hear that one a lot. Yeah. So yeah. let's just put it, leave it at that. Is there something else that you yeah, feel? Yeah, there like was a, two and three. There, there was two and three. We <laughs> we want to hear. Uh, them. Well, the other one was. Let me. I'm trying to think. Which one? I mean, it's kind of missing. Okay. So the other one really was. It, this has kind of happened a little bit more since COVID had happened and the whole Black Lives Matter thing had happened. Just more inclusion of the ethnicities for certain characters when it comes to animation. Hmm. Um, because after all of that had happened, that's when I kind of found out, which I didn't know, that there are animation characters out there who are black or of color and that are not voiced by people who are black or of color. Hmm. So that's something that I've noticed that's, kind of been turning around and they are hiring and there are sometimes requesting people who are of color for these certain characters, yeah. which I really do appreciate that now. And it just makes us feel more included. And it's more authentic and more real. Um, and I think that should be how it is like across the board when it comes to uh, characters who are different cultures other than Caucasian. Do they ask for it in a certain way? They say, we're looking for actors who, who, whose own culture, how do they carefully ask it? Like, do they say, whose own cultural background reflects that of the character? How do they go about they, requesting that? Because it's they, such a sensitive topic. Yeah, they would say we're specifically looking for, they also African-American voiceover yeah. actors or actors, or um, they'll try to phrase it in that way. So you kind of just mm -hmm. know that this is all they want. Or they say only seeking African-American voiceover actors for mm. this role, or if it's like female or male types of course um yeah but they'll i mean obviously i'm black so that's the only auditions i get i wouldn't get like indian or asian or anything mm -hmm. like that but mm -hmm. um they'll just kind of voice it just one line straight like that this is all we're looking for like, are you getting any that? roles that are auditions that are uh non-binary do you actually hear that as a casting thing? i've gotten two auditions like that and they were both for animation and um Sometimes when it comes to that, I'm just like, I don't, I'm like, what kind of voice should I do then? Or Right. I know. I was just throwing it that out there. I just... <laughs> yeah. So I kind of just like, all right, I'll just do what I think the character would sound like. Yeah. But I guess that's when it's when they're not specifically looking for a male or a female. So I'm like, well, 
I'm just that's huge on like like on camera. That is huge. Like I'm seeing commercials left and right. They're casting people who are like you know non sort of gender fluid, non binary, not really like clear. Like that's so I was wondering it just about that was was spitball in there to see if that was anything showing up on a script Mm because right, what does it sound like? to be non-binary yeah I, right? I, what does I that mean no yeah yeah that's a tough one so i try to sound because i've had auditions where i have to sound like a little boy or a teenage uh-huh. male and, and yeah i'm like i can try to make my voice go deep but also try not to sound like a female so it, mm. there's that fine line of trying to figure it out so that's kind of another challenge for voiceover people to yeah how how does it sound to not sound male or female but like a person absolutely mm-hmm. yeah. uh got one last question here from mm-hmm. jim mcnicholas on youtube he says what tool do you use to post to all social social media mm. at once? Oh, so, that's a tough that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, for me, I know there are tools that people use in apps, but I don't do them. I don't do. I post you go through it all each one individually. individually. Yeah, I have to because I'm a very specific person, and I have to have everything neat and perfect in the way it's formatted. But it's just when I do that for Instagram then it posts to Facebook and it doesn't look the same. It's like weird and the fonting's off. So I just, usually what I do is when I post something, I draft it from the night before. So you can draft in Instagram, you can draft in Twitter, you can draft in LinkedIn um, and Facebook. So I draft all of them the night before the way I want it to look. And then um, the very next day when I want to post it, I just go through, double check it, post, double check, post. Yeah, that's yeah, so. that's the way I found it gets done the f- fastest that way. Otherwise, you know, you're, yeah. you're shotgun blasting it out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, they, and they do all have unique formatting and they do have yeah. character count things. And mm-hmm. you can't put a link in a Facebook post because it won't show up. I mean, it won't show up in an Instagram yes. post because you can't have a link in an Instagram post, but you can have a link in an Instagram story. And they're yes. all different. It, it's, it's there's yeah. just no shortcut for doing it. You have Twitter to do it Twitter kind of does the same thing. It's a yeah. little weird, so yeah. you have to, mm-hmm. I, yeah, figure out a way around. Twitter that. and LinkedIn are the closest to being similar, I think. Sort of. Well, maybe yeah. maybe yeah, Facebook that, pages yeah. and LinkedIn. I don't know. They're all different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Post everyone's on, on everything. And... Let's all just be on one platform then. <sighs> Everyone's on everything. Let's all. I tried so hard to pry myself off Facebook, but that's where the The conversations happening. Yeah, (laughs) you know the groups. The groups are where it's at. You know. Well, Noveen, it has been a super duper pleasure having you with us tonight. Thank you so much. uh, Been looking forward to this. You're you're a delightful young lady, and uh, we wish you you all the uh, the best. By the way, we got uh, somebody wrote in. MKH stands for Manfred Hibbing, who is the designer for Sennheiser. In case you were wondering, there you go. Because there's an MK8, MK8, right. and there's MKH. Oh. So H must the H must mean some other German term that determines that kind of a microphone. But uh, there you go. Today. Thanks now for that we whoever, know. whoever yeah. found that. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got anything that's that we should be looking forward to right now that you can tell us about real quickly? Yeah. Uh, so definitely, Red Falls coming out early. Um, 2023 uh so keep an eye out for that i'm also doing another video game with bethesda probably kind of sort of get that away maybe um but that's <laughs> going to be coming out soon so keep an eye out for that can't say the name of the show <laughs> of the video game but that um i have rainbow high which is a big animation show on youtube and netflix so they have new episodes every other week that's a very popular show and i will also be moderating a panel at comic-con this year so this will be my first time i'm excited to be there i'll be oh, moderating the, love that. the third annual hollywood game changers a conversation with the women behind popular film and tv projects so uh women from hair and makeup departments or producers or directors or vfx artists like it'll be that so i'm really excited to do that so um that'll be on july 21st at comic well there's your chance to bump into tara strong yeah yes i know right <laughs> <laughs> And, oh and she'll know who you are by then, which is always kind of cool. That would be yeah. cool. That would be that cool. Would be really cool. Uh, Noveen, thanks so much for being with us and good luck with all the other stuff. And we look forward to meeting you in person one of these days when we can all get back in our yes, studio here. That'd be awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. All righty. Take care. 
All right, we'll be right back and uh, tie everything up into a nice tiny little knot right after this. Don't go away. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact VoiceActorWebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's time to thank our longtime sponsors of VOBS, Source Elements, and tell you a little bit about one of the things that makes Source Elements, Source Connect, a pro for some and maybe a con for others. And this is something called the iLock. Here's one right here. This is the latest edition of the iLock. See how small it is? This is what allows that license to be portable. And a lot of you are used to not using one of these, right? And I've said it on the, sh on the ads, Many times, no, you don't need an eye lock, don't worry. But a lot of people are finding out this is really the best tool for them because they have more than one computer. They've got their travel computer and they have their home studio computer. Or you may have a vacation home or a family home where you go and record all the time and you don't want to have to go through the process of moving licenses back and forth. Source Connect supports the eye lock USB key that's how you bring your license from studio to studio. You bring your key. Now, if, if you're going to be doing this, this is what I recommend. Put it on a lanyard, make it big and hard to lose, and attach a tracker to it. <laughs> this is a tile, but whatever you get, attach something to this because your Source Connect license is now living in this little USB key. You lose this, you lose your license. So... It's really valuable. Whatever the value of the license is on the key is what it costs. So this is just, I wanted to just have a little tip. You guys have heard me talk about Source Connect a thousand times. You know you can go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial. You can get a test license. You can subscribe to it. You can buy it. There's a million ways to do it. But anyway, I just wanted to share a little, a little PSA about what the iLock actually is and why it's a benefit to you if you're on Source Connect. Anyway, We'll be right back to wrap this up right after this. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yes, you are. That was way too fact. short. I can tell you from running the show last week, <laughs> that one's a pain in the neck because it's but you're like click 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 click. click. Well, <laughs> oh, how many, the fact that Sue gets his back in after the world's shortest Howard Kogan bumper is pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you know, she's watching the actual she's time, the, the three seconds on that one. <laughs> anyway, anyway Novine was great. That was she awesome. was fabulous. Thank you for recommending her. You know, she, here's the thing about her. She's fun to work with, and that's why they hire her. You know, she's in the studio, or she's just friendly and like, oh, she does what they want, and she's pleasant to work with. Talent is, is so talent gets you, gets you in the door, and your personality keeps you there because they want to work with you time and time again absolutely all righty next week on this very show if you tune in well we won't be here live but we do have tech talk 81 which we're about to do and if you've got a question for us for tech talk if you've got something about your home voiceover studio throw that in the chat room now too because that's what makes our show work is the questions you have and we enjoy that more than anything else uh, one of the other things we enjoy is that people actually donate to our show to make sure that we maintain the technical magnificence that we have every week on this show. And uh, who are our donors of the work? You get we uh, the work or our week? The workers that keep our week going. Great. Thank going. you. Thank you. <laughs> Jonathan that. Grant. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. 
Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, George A. Whittem. That's my dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> yes. Uh, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas, a Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Shanna Pentington Baird, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra Manweller. Alrighty, you know it's uh, it's it's great, you know. And if you go to our website uh, vobs.tv, there is a button that says donate now. You can give us a buck. You can give us ten. You can be like some people, give us a lot more, which we really appreciate. And then we get to say their name every week on this. All show. you got to do is subscribe for a buck, and we're going to say your name. And chances are. That name recognition will get you somewhere. It's just a matter of time. It may take you a, take a month. It might take five years, but eventually, some. I know I heard that name somewhere. Um, I just want to mention uh, we're going to do a another appearance on we Jody are? Krangle's Clubhouse. That's the first <laughs> I, I've heard of it. But I I'm almost forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> but she uh, it showed up on my calendar. I was like, wait a minute, is that happening? Yes, it is. She confirmed today. Uh, we're going to have the George, the tech team, whoever can make it, Dan, hopefully you can be there, I'll be there. um, to just talk tech on Jody's clubhouse. So that's on clubhouse. So just search for Jody Krangle on there and, uh, join in. She calls it the power of sound. That's the name of her clubhouse, right. which is in support of her podcast, the power of sound. So it's sort of a companion. Anyway, we'll be there. Again, June 29th, 11 a.m. Pacific time. All right. You still got your coupon code there? Yeah, it still works, and people still occasionally use it. 20% off, folks. I mean, come on. Go this for is it. Huge discount. I'm putting it out there. It's amazing how few people actually use it. Yes, it works for any dem on-demand you know, time bookings with any of us, and it works on any of, any of the webinars. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention... Twisted Wave Advanced is coming up next week. That's on the 28th at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can sign up at georgethe.tech slash webinars if that's interesting to you. And yes, that coupon code works. So hope to see you there. Super duper. All righty. Uh, you can also join our mailing list. To, uh, go again to vobs.tv and click on that because we got over 800 people on our mailing list and they know who's going to be on the show before anybody else does and it reminds them to make sure that they get in there to watch uh because we like having a live audience for this show so we can be a little bit more interactive yeah uh we need to thank our sponsors as well like harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voice actor websites.com and, and jmc, JMC demos. demos thank you to, uh to jmc uh jeff holman great job in the chat room tonight getting all those questions through uh, and Sumerlino for getting it done. We missed her last week, but you know, George and I were fighting over the switcher, but you know, we like having Sue making, making it a lot easier for us. It's the same. Absolutely. And of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Anyway, we're going to re-rack it now for tech talk. Tell your friends, if they've got questions for us, get them in the chat room right now, because we'll get to those in the next, uh, next half hour or so, but we're going to carry on here and do that. But that's all for this particular edition of voiceover body shop. Not an easy business, but we're here to help you out. And we could bringing you all the best information and the best guests here on voiceover body shop. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO BS. Stay tuned for tech talk. If you're watching live, if not, Oh, well see you in a bit.